Hello, and welcome to the Ant-Man channel. It is Thursday, the 7th of November, 2013, and I'm Ant-Man, and I only got one article of news for you today, so I'll just get into it. It's from ClashDaily.com. Clash Daily, uh, one of their own uh, authors wrote this. Her name is Aud Audrey Russo. Audrey Russo is the host of the weekly Real Talk radio show and the co-host of Woman Talk Radio Show. She handles Middle East issues, national security terrorism for their e-zine, and writes on foreign affairs for TheExaminer.com. She guests on several radio shows, including The Rick Amato Show, The Simon Conway Show, The Pat Campbell Show, and The Mike Wiley Show. Audrey is the managing editor for the online opinion journal EddieBlog.com. Her articles can also be read at the Center for Changing World Views and Gold Coast Chronicle, as well as other online journals. She is also an active member of the NYC Performing Arts Community as a singer and actor. So there you go. A very talented, brainy person. Anyways, this article is entitled "Unholy Trinity: Islam, the Left, and the un and the Willing f and the and the Willfully Ignorant." And they have a very scary picture attached here. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, those of us who are paying attention are watching the once magnificent and, ma and majesty of Europe being gradually swallowed up into the quicksand of an ideology that came from much darker places than the nighttime desert sands. A tyranny that intends to finish the rest of the West in its global sweep. It's a treacherous triad, triad that has well, uh, three well-known elements. We first have the barbaric and tyrannical ideology cloaking itself in religion. Islam, Jihad, both soft and hard, needs little helpers. And sadly for those of us unwilling to comply, sadly for those of us unwilling to comply, these are two elements ready, willing, and able to complete this unholy trinity. Now, most of who identify themselves as Muslim have not read the words of tradition, oh, uh, words or traditions of Muhammad, Quran, and Hadiths. So their view is an incomplete one, hence their nonviolent perspective toward freedom. But the devout followers who take the, uh, the, take the dictates of the Quran as holy marching orders, they are the dangerous and pernicious ones, pernicious ones, and they make up the first part of this terrifying triad, or triad. Well, <clears throat> religion is dangerous because a lot of it is a lot of cult stuff, like, um, a lot of religions out there are actually taken from the Bible, but they take out Jesus as the main focus of the entire gospel. And this makes a cult. Like, you know, uh, we can name a couple here. Like, uh, uh, what was it, Mormons? Mormons were, like, founded off of that guy that, that, um, that they made famous in the freaking Disney movies, Pocahontas. What's his name? John Smith or whatever. Well, the guy was a crazy kookhead. He was talking about... I mean, he was a polygamist. He was into um, having sex with young with young women. You know, he's he's pff, the stuff that you know that Mormons believe is really out there. It's kooky, okay? It's kooksville. But like the the thing about them is that they're not really they're more deception than violence. They're more like you can't be in the club unless you know the secrets of what we know. It's kind of like the whole secret society occultism that they have in. You know, in, in at all the high level uh, universities and stuff, all the um, the uh, what do you call them, Ivy League or whatever, they you know there's it's that type of thing. It's like a it's like a cult. It's like you drink the Kool Aid and you're in or whatever, but you don't know that you're actually killing yourself. But anyways, uh, Islam is dangerous, in particularly because they they don't know what they believe and they're actually forced to. I read a lot of a lot of stuff from VoiceOfTheMartyrs.com and they always. They, they always point out the fact that there are hostile areas and there are areas where it's just unlawful to not to, to preach the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not lawful there. And in some places, it's, it's actually hostile toward it. So, you know, all, you see a lot of this stuff all over the world. And, and it's it's all of it is inspired by either Buddhists or it's inspired by uh, Muslim extremists because <clears throat> they are caught up in the tradition of keeping that religion in the family and it being kind of a disgrace and not if you're not a, if you're not a muslim like that anymore then it becomes a disgrace on the family they even burn their own relatives they try to kill their own relatives in all this ways over this religion that they don't even they don't even get into they're not even into it they don't even read what's in the quran but then 
I think it's more of a I want to please people around me type of thing. Like I want people to accept me as just a normal person and so that no one messes with me because their 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 culture and what's going on in their country is very serious and it's very very like uncertain whether you're going to live or die that day. You know, there's mortars going off near your house, there's airstrikes, drones and all kinds of stuff. You know, it's un it's uncertain what goes on over there and how if you're going to see another day. So you know that they have that, you know, peer pressure type of thing going on and the fact that they, they bring that here and they use it among the young African Americans to, to get them to have this like type of self entitlement that they think that the white man is like some he's different than all of us somehow and we're all the, the, the issue is an issue of the heart and that we're all sinful and wicked and that we need Jesus Christ for that so that he can transform us to make us in his image on the outside but for some reason, idiots think that it has something to do with the color of your skin, what makes you a good or bad person, and what makes your motives even good or bad. I think it's opportunism. I think that people are trying to pick a fight with people who they really don't want to. The good people don't fight. They're not in your face trying to intimidate you. They're not talking and slandering you to your face to try to, uh, you know, kind of antagonize you because we just want to be left alone. We're just good people that want to be left alone. But the more that we see this kind of stuff going on in our country, I think it's the more we're going to feel like the caged lion and we have all these fat, perverted liberals poking their sticks at us. And it's like, you know, I don't need to take that from you. You know what I mean? Like, you're the one who's in need here. You're the one that obviously has an issue that you cannot even, you cannot even see. You can't see what your own issue is. And it's an issue of the heart, man. And then, you gotta, you're, you're full of pride and arrogance and all this stuff, and that's why you don't listen. And, and, and this, for you Christians out here that are listening to me, this is a serious issue, and we shouldn't be arrogant in our knowledge of, of, of the saving and healing power of Christ. We should reach out with love and compassion. This isn't a, this isn't a who's smarter issue. This is an uh, issue of the heart, and we need to approach it as such, and it's a very serious issue. We need to be loving and compassionate, not trying to be contentious and knowing that I know more than you, of course we do, because creation and God, he tells you the truth, and like the atheist and whatever they want to call themselves, agnostics, they don't believe in, they don't believe in absolute truth, so you know what I mean, like we know that there is absolute truth, because God gives us that, and you know what I mean, and, and with evolution and all these things that are used to like blind these people, and also have, give them a safe haven to, to hide behind, well they can run, but they can't hide from what's really coming, and that's the you know what I mean? The judgment. What did God say that people are going to be ignorant of in our days? The three day, the three things that people run away from God uh, with, the the they 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 deny the flood, they deny the creation, and they deny the coming judgment. Those are the three things that people are ignorant, willingly about these days. Next, we have the leftist, self-loathing, ungrateful, myopic. Irrational teenagers who act exclusively out of emotion when making critical and permanent decisions. The kind of decisions that affect the masses. Their lack of wisdom is implausible and their aversion for truth like uh, Superman to kryptonite. They recoil at the thought of it. Their inability to deal with reality and their affinity for fantasy causes them to be deceived by anyone who tickles their ear, strokes their ego, or feels their pain. And their love for deceit has blinded them forever recognizing the truth. The perfect catalyst for a Trojan horse. Well, absolutely. The general public is emotionally governed. And, you know, I had an issue yesterday with somebody who was using your mom jokes toward me. And I had either the decision to just laugh about it brainlessly like him. Or I had the, ch or I had the opportunity to say, you know, I'm not going to laugh about it. But then, like, he kind of was trolling me by laughing more and more, trying to get on my nerves. So I gave him what he wanted. I said, so you want me to be mad? Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you what you want, you know what I mean? If that's what you want, you want me to get mad and in your face. But the, the truth of the matter is, is that there is something that the world doesn't hold dear to them that the Christian does, does and that's your integrity, your self-respect, and, um, you know, all those good things that God has put, it, put in us, man. We want to honor who we are. We honor who we're, who we're here in the name of, and we, we honor that fact. We don't treat it as if it's nothing. Like, the world... We'll talk, this is like the yuppie culture that's around nowadays. They want to break each other down instead of build each other up. Because breaking each other down is a symbol of them being so weak and broken down in the inside. That they want other people to be in their company. And then when you stand up to these people, they go, ha ha ha. Ha ha, you're getting mad. And it's not that I'm getting mad. It's just that, you know what, dude, don't talk about my mom. Can I say that? 
don't don't I have a right to say something like that? Because if it's foolishness to defend your mom's honor, then then that's the world's philosophy about what joking has no boundaries and um, they can use these things against you to try to dumb down the conversation, to dumb down everything. And it's like, no, man, I don't I don't live my life like you. And I just rather, you know, tell you, man, like, you know, you got to stop doing that or else. I'm just going to take it, you know what I mean, the way that you want me to take it, offensively. And then I'm going to tell you to just stop. And I embarrassed him because, of course, I'm, I'm you know, I like to fight. I'm a fighter. I'm, I don't use it for intimidation. I use it for the cage. But when somebody wants to push my buttons and, and, and test me, you know, hey, then, then let's test on. Let's go. Let's see where you're willing to go with this. And then you see that it's not that big. That's not that big of a deal to him. It's just a joke. And then you show him that, you know. You're not weak and pathetic like him, that you can't talk down to me just because you think you can and it's a joke. Everything's a joke to you. This is important, you know, it's that's the that's the that's the world today. Those are the young kids that are growing up today. They they have no boundaries and no self-respect. They have no respect for you, and they're gonna treat you like that. They're gonna treat them they're gonna treat other people the way that they feel like whatever is right in their own eyes, because in their own self, they have no self-worth. They have no real purpose in life. So they treat everything like a joke. Let's be honest. Without God, life is a joke. There is no point of being a good person. I could go out and I'll fight everyone I want and I'll beat up everyone I want if it wasn't for God. And you can't say anything about that because there is no point in being a good person. Is it going to get me to heaven? It's not. It's not going to get me to heaven. Am I going to change the world on my own? I don't think so. I can make the where I, I can make the corner where I'm put here a little brighter, but... Let's just be honest, man. I don't have to, just like God didn't have to die for your sins, I don't have to be nice to you. But for his sake, I'm going to be. But I use these things not as an intimidation, but I use them as a way to, to show people that, yo, man, life may be a joke to you and I could see why, but I have a new reason to live. And, you know, this could be a good opportunity for you to share your testimony. But the stupid morons out there are just going to laugh at you, but you should do it. And you should do it because you're doing it under God and not... You're doing it out of love and compassion, by the way. And it's a good way. It's, if you feel like you're being attacked and that you feel weak and that everyone's just trying to get down on you, bring it before God. Bring it before God and give thanks that He's already bought the victory for you and that you can just go on and be confident and not ashamed. Don't ever be ashamed about this, man. You have a real purpose in life. And all these people that just laugh and mock you, they, they know after they're done laughing that they feel this weight on their heart, that they know that they're just empty and they and, and what does misery like it loves company so next we have the leftist self-loathing we already read that the trojan horses that of course they're liberal they're going to be for abortion they're going to be for homosexuals and having all the rights that we have in marriage you know desecrating the the whole covenant of that and you know what i mean that's where the trojan horse comes in because they're used for political uh, agendas that are caused by the occult people that are running this the ship that is actually driving it down. That already hit the iceberg. They're, they're already running for the, the, the lifeboats. They're just telling you everything's fine and everything's dandy with you. But, you know, all these people are actually, they're used as puns, in my opinion. The homosexuals, the atheists, they're not as smart as the Satanists because they're being used by them. Uh, and to complete this tormenting trio, the willingly ignorant, the fools, the intellectually lazy, the gullible hordes who wouldn't, nor not couldn't, think their way out of a paper bag. The sheeple who will gladly build their own gallows and volunteer as their own executioner. Their resistance to truth on any level which is offered to them daily and free of charge makes them the fertile ground to plant, nurture, and harvest the corrupt fruit of this oppression. Destruction. An, un an unholy trinity aiming at the liberty that truth delivers and demanding to be worshipped by commanding all bow to its precepts by any means necessary, draconian or not. This terrorizing triad is, pres is present today in all democracies globally. We are seeing its straggling reach bringing down our cousins across the pond. But its hunger for desolation is insatiable. B be sure of this. We are next. We, we, uh, and we will be complicit if we, knowing its M.O., do not foil its progress. Shalom through strength. Good. I mean, it's a basic, a straightforward article that she wrote, and it's a good one, I think, because... The issues of today are the willingly ignorant, the religiously indoctrinated, and the people who are the the, the left who yeah, they know what they're doing or they're just they they love getting a pat on the head so much that they'll do anything they're told. They'll believe anything they hear. So I don't know you guys, you guys if it's put if it's put on your heart to, to be a man of God and to 
to research things for yourself and, and watch and study hard and be and, and, and be a good steward and be all those things, man, then good. But you also need to know that you're also now accountable for these things. You need to teach other people these things and you need to share this stuff with other people. And who cares if people laugh at you? People in Syria get their heads cut off for this stuff. You know, I get mad when I hear Christians say, I don't like calling myself a Christian because of this and that. Shut up. Shut the hell up, dude. People have gotten their heads cut off for this stuff. How dare you say that you're not going to, you don't want to be called a Christian because, because people laugh at you. Get over yourself. You know what I mean? Grow, grow some, you got some thin skin, son. If you, if that's all that gets your, your, you know, that that's what gets, gets you all flustered is people making fun of you. Hey man, welcome to the club. That's everybody else that calls himself a Christian. Because it's a normal thing. I, if I'm hanging out with my two friends and we're watching like Discovery Channel, History Channel, whatever. Whatever we're watching. I see people always taking shots at Christianity. And it's so awkward to be sitting there with my friends who don't believe in God. And we're hearing this stuff being force fed down our throat on the mainstream media. Like, oh, let's just jab at the Christian all the time. And it just makes me feel like, man, like what am I doing to you guys? I'm just sitting here, man. And you guys are just... Taking everything that that's written in the Bible out of context to attack me, it never gets old that people try to say, "Look at all the things that people that Christians have done in the name of God." You mean the Catholic Church? Well, sorry, dude. No one said the Catholic Church was holy, and no one said they were right about anything. And maybe you should figure out that for yourself and look into it and be like questioning, "What is the Vatican? Why is it like treated like a state? Why do all the why do all the leaders of the world go and kiss his hand and worship him?" Hmm. Maybe you should ask those questions. Maybe it's not Christians who have been killing people all these years. Maybe it's been them. Who knows? Maybe if you look into history, you could figure this stuff out. Hmm. Why are there corrupted Bibles? Hmm. Maybe you should look into the Reformation and Counter-Reformation of the 1600s. Hmm. These are good questions. Instead of just believing everything you hear and then demonizing the Christians who just want to have liberty in this country. Get over yourselves, all right? You have a sin problem. You need to come to Jesus Christ and humble yourself or else he's going to ignore you. Because he resists the proud. Anyways, I love you guys. Have a God-blessed day.